Okay, welcome to this week's episode of Love Summon. And for this week, we are on a field trip. Yes. We are continuing our series on what you need to do to get ready for your RV season. We've covered some electrical, some water, and today we're gonna to show you your first aid kits. And the medical, the medical side of things, what you should have and what you don't need. Right, and because we're not medical professionals, we've teamed up with the Bennington Rescue Squad here in our southern Vermont town, and they're gonna help us point out some of the stuff in our kits, what's good, what's bad. Before we even begin, we wanna thank the Bennington Rescue Squad for yep. uh, having us here in their facility, and they rely a lot on donations. So if you're watching this from Southern Vermont, or even if you're watching it from somewhere else, we're gonna include a link in the description uh, below in the video's description, and definitely consider donating to the Bennington Rescue Squad, because these guys do a lot of great work for our community. Yep. They're helping us out here with this video, and we really appreciate it. So maybe you can show um, some love towards them. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and check out what we've got here for the Love Subs First Aid Kits. Should be interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think so, if you've seen some of my other videos. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm here with Art Grew, who is the executive director of the Bennington Rescue Squad, correct? This is. And we are, we are here for, we're going to talk about first aid kits, like we said in our opening. So, um, yeah, it's a cool, is this thing going to take off and drive out of here right now? <laughs> it won't, it won't. It's probably a bigger first aid kit than you need. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully we never see, no, hopefully you yeah, we, we don't want to see that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk first aid kits. I've kind of laid out what we take on the love sub here. Um, but first I want to ask you the question, what's your opinion on whether you should buy a first aid kit, like at CVS, go to CVS and pick up one of those little boxes, or whether you kind of should put one together on your own, what's the pros and cons of each? I think it depends on what you're going to do. So if you're going out for, you know, the weekend, yep. you can buy one. Um, you, probably the easiest way is to buy one. If you're going to be going out for long periods of time, yep. you may want to specialize that kit more for what you might need right. or what your family might need. And in some cases it's best to do that yourself, put your own one together. But either way is acceptable. Uh, having something is always better than having nothing. Right. So we, you know, we encourage people to be prepared um, you know, in, in for whatever that, that, that emergency might be. So in, uh, basic first aid kits will give you a lot of that stuff that you're gonna need. Yep, great. So we're gonna start off with our first one here. And this is an example of buying something, I think, versus actually making your own. Yep. Because this thing is just stuffed with with bandage after bandage after bandage. This thing here is an example, I think, of, you know, you buy these things and they just stuff them with stuff mm -hmm. you don't need, like, like a lot of these rolls that make it feel like you've got something good, but in fact, it's not really custom designed for what you would want it to do. But I keep it in the truck anyway. Um, do bandages have expiration dates? I mean, if I look at this thing, like this guy right here, this bandage, so some of them will and some of them won't. Th this one in particular here doesn't appear to. Um, it's in German, so I can't really be 100% sure. Right. But um, bandages that are in a sterile container, um, that sterility of that container expires. That's what, that's what the expiration date is. It's not that the actual bandage itself won't work. It's just that they can't guarantee sterility inside of that packaging after a certain date. This is designed more for holding the bandage on, so this would go on the outside, so that doesn't have an expiration date. Okay. Um, but some of, like, if you have a 4x4 four four bandage, okay. some of them may have expiration dates on them because they're, and, and, I, and I'm going to use quotes, sterile, because, they, you know, they're not going to be sterile when you put it on an open wound that's been exposed to the air. But what they don't want you to do is introducing bacteria from the environment directly into the wound. So that's why okay. it's, it's sterile. So after that expiration date, they can't guarantee that. Right, so maybe we'll take a look at some of our bandages to see if we have an expiration date, but probably since 1981, eh, yeah, we, It's probably pretty squiffy. How, how often should you go through and check for your expiration dates? How often would you recommend you do that? Well, I mean, we check ours every day. Um, I'm not sure you have to do that. No. Um, but I would Even say, I wouldn't do I, that. I would say probably every six months or a year, it's a good idea to go through it, and also, not so much for expiration dates as, as more importantly it is to familiarize yourself with the kit mm. because yep. you look at this kit and you open it up and now do you know what's at the bottom of the kit on a day like today you're going to open it up and you're going to be able to look through and go yeah okay here's here here's this but if all of a sudden something catastrophic happens and you grab that kit and you open it up that's not the time to be figuring out what's at the bottom of the kit because your your manual dexterity and your ability to reason through those simple tasks takes a lot longer. Right. So familiarity with your equipment, same thing, you know, you don't hook up your camper for the first time the day you're taking a trip to California. Right. Because you wanna know how it works, how do you set it up? The same thing with your first aid kit. That's a really good point. Excellent, all right. So talking about first aid kits, what are the stuff that you would recommend for say, say a camper who's just going off, 
for a weekend camping trip or for say a week or something like that. They're pretty close to inshore. They're probably at an established campground. They what could, are those essentials that you would say? They could get to a pharmacy or CVS yeah, so if they had a, to. But a man that difficult, what would you say would be important to have on board? I think, um, you know, band-aids of okay. a yep. variety of different sizes. Band-aids are, you know, <clears throat> and if you have little kids, they also are entertaining. So uh, you can use band-aids for multiple things. But um, a medical tape, you know, okay. some basic Sweet. gauze pads. So here, let, let's see if those what we have. So let's see. Yeah, we get some of the, here's some of these larger bandages. I don't see yep. a uh, okay. expiration date on these. No, ba so bandages you won't. Okay. Um, so we get, I find these big ones to be really, these are the bigger ones here. I've had to use these just uh, earlier in the year. So these things are pretty good. So we've got a bag. You, hit, you hit a uh, tent stake. A tent stake, a metal tent stake. At one of at our night. rallies. And gashed myself. And gouged so. your leg pretty well on that. Yeah, so those are important. And, and you know, it's some, something to clean with. Okay, um, and, like so alcohol you, swabs? Yeah, al alcohol swabs. So alcohol swabs will work on a wound <clears throat> cleaning swab might be better only because Alcohol will do the same thing, but okay. alcohol stinks. So, mm. you know, for an adult, it's gonna be a little bit painful, but if you have small children you're traveling with, if you go to clean a wound with this, they will remember it. Okay. Um, and probably not in a positive way. So okay. there, there's, there's small wound cleaning pads you can get, or even a small bottle of peroxide. Okay. Uh, less painful than an alcohol pack. So, so maybe, hydrogen so, peroxide. Yes. Because yep. we have okay, that. Okay, so let's, uh, let's check out. I think we've got some. I'm sorry, I'm jumping from kid to kid. Oh, that's there. okay. <laughs> so uh, we do have the hydrogen peroxide. And this stuff usually does have expiration dates, right? I believe it does. I can't see it, but. We um, also have the Neosporin as well. Yep, and Neosporin is great. Um, you know, ideally you want to clean the wound first before you put that on, um, you know, and, and water. Soap and water is the best thing to clean it with. Um, you know, if you use one of the other cleaners, you want to clean it off with soap and water after. So these are, I believe, this is exactly his art's point, is that you have to know what's in your kit. Because if, <laughs> if, if I've got somebody who's bleeding out, it says sterile and cotton tips applicators. So these are cotton tip these applicators. Are yep. So they're big uh, Q-tips. Yep. In the yep. medical field, I call them cotton tip applicators. Yes. Um, uh, so. And, and so the, the, the reason behind these is, you know, you have that neosporin, you know, you put the neosporin on this, you apply it to the wound because you don't want to apply it directly out of the package onto the wound because now any, any blood or contaminants that are on your skin have now gotten back into that container. Even though neosporin is an antibiotic, there's the possibility of introducing foreign material back into that container. So, um, you know, a lot of people will, you know, if you're only using it on yourself, it, it's, it's your, it's your right. flora. So, um, but if you're, you know, if you're giving it to somebody else or whatever, put it on an applicator, then apply it after That's the wound has been cleaned in some way. That's a good tip because we, uh, we've got our Neosporin in here, actually. I'm wearing that. And, and again, we keep these things in the bags, but I, I think in an emergency, I'm not going to do it here. You're just going to go whonk. You want to dump all this stuff out <laughs> but you and find knew it. it was in that bag. But I, so, so that, and that's a good thing is, so you, at least you knew, you know, when I mentioned the Osporin, you knew which bag to go to and where to grab it. And that's important because if you have things in different places and all of a sudden you grab this and you bring it outside and the next thing is like, oh no, it's in the other bag that's in We knew exactly yeah. where the hydrogen peroxide was it's, versus... Yep. Right. Yeah, so that's that familiarity of your kit to going through it. So, so and, and a couple of things. A, we keep everything in compartmentalized bags. So these are all of our creams, balms, salves, stuff mm -hmm. like that. We have one with all of our pills, yep. like our Imodium for diarrhea, Benadryl for reactions, yep. uh, thing. Dulcolex, which is left over from my colonoscopy. I don't know why <laughs> I keep that in there, but I do have Dulcolex for my colonoscopy. Make sure you get one if you're over 50. Benadryl is a great thing to have because yep. Benadryl is one of those things, and, and ammonium. You know, even if you're close to uh, uh, a uh, a pharmacy, you know, if you need Benadryl, if you've gotten stung, that Benadryl, you don't want to be waiting that amount of time. Right. Um, and you know what? If you need the ammonium, do you really want to ride in the car to go to the pharmacy? Right. Good point. You know, um, and not only I'll that, leave it at that. So, and, and not um, only that, but from the RV world, do you want to be filling up your black tank with, uh, without your ammonium? Don't yeah. fill up your black tank. But like Art was saying, so this stuff here expires September of 2020. So do I get rid of it at that point, or is it still okay to use, or should it probably just... Well, so I'm, I'm going to the official rule list. Right. You replace it. Right. And that's... So, love subbing uh, is all about official rules, yeah. so... All right. Well, that's kind of like yeah. our first... Our first kit which is we keep this one inside the Airstream, and this is the one that we go to for bombs,
pills. We have some tape. We have our thermometer so that we can check our temperatures. I think we also have some tweezers in here too. So some plastic tweezers. This is a good thing to have. Disposable. For like splinters. And splinters, yeah, you'd be surprised. Things like that, so. All right, so the other kits that we take, aside from this thing, which I think we pretty much determined it's, look at this, it's all like yellow. It's like, this is like an artifact almost. Not even a first aid kit, but an artifact. I'm like, okay. I would say there's a collector's item. It's, it's, it, it might be. Very cool. And this kit here, we keep in the truck. And this, this is some of our more intense things. So what would, aside from the bandages and the, the aspirins and pills and stuff like that, if you're going off, like us, we're going to the Badlands this summer. Um, we're going off to Yellowstone. What are some of the other stuff you might consider uh, bringing along with you? So we're, we're looking at supplies that would sustain you for a little bit longer. Because as you get into those areas, you know, help takes longer to get there. Yep. Your cell phone may not work. Yep. So, you know, you look at things like, you know, CPR pocket mask, you know, and, and, and CPR training. Yes. So, um, what do you have? So this is our, aside from our bags, we also have stuff that we keep with us all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think we've got, and I've never used it. Well, thank God I've never used it. That's a good thing. But I, I am CPR trained. And that's something, you know, anybody who's out, you know, I mean, we say anybody should get CPR trained. Uh, but, you know, particularly if you're out camping, because a lot of times you're in those areas where, you know, it's going to take a while for help to get there. And you're traveling down the road, so you're, you're, you're in the bad yep. Do you know right away where you are? And do you know how long it's going to take for help to get there? At least if you can provide CPR for that, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 25 minutes. Some of those remote areas, it could be 45 minutes for help to get there. You know, so that's one of those things that will make the difference between somebody, you know, surviving and not. Right. And it's, you know, even if you just learn hands-only CPR, hands-only CPR is, you know, doesn't take long to learn, doesn't require a certification, just requires that you refresh it. And, um, you know, and if you've taken it, you know, to learn rescue breathing, that's where your, your pocket yep. mask would come in. Um, so, it, and you can see it doesn't take up much space. It's, I wouldn't unfold it too much because they're really hard to get back in. Yeah, I'm not going to. I was just seeing if it expired or anything like that. This is from 2005 is the lock code number. So, mm -hmm. I, I, but I guess this thing doesn't expire, right? It doesn't usually. No, the only thing you want to check is if you just open it up just a little bit, it'll <coughs> tell you if the plastic has gotten too brittle. Okay. Yep. Um, that's a good point. So, but it, it has a valve on it so that when you're, so when you're putting your face against somebody else's, it prevents anything from coming back. Oh, that's um, a big, that's, that's yeah. huge in the CPR world. <laughs> yeah. Well, in, in any world, you know, we, yeah. we like to say if it's not yours, don't touch it. So, you know, right. that's where, you know, we make sure there's that barrier, you know, even in what we do, there's that barrier between us and, and, and the patient, whether it's our gloves, which, you know, you have in your kit. Yep. So you got some of those have. in here as um, well, I think. Yep. You got some in here. Um, and, and that, that barrier device, so that, you know, is, it, it, the, the training of, you know, of learning CPR, some additional bandaging stuff. So whether it's, you know, something to, you know, uh, you know, cling wrap or something so that you can put over, you know, Ooh. bandages that you might've put on. And that was some of the stuff in that, in the German kit. That was that, that little roll you took out yep. was basically a cling wrap to just hold the bandage on once you put it on. Um, that's a good thing to have in that other kit. Um, and then. You know, as you look at there, there's triangular bandages there. If uh, uh, we call it a triangular bandage, it's it's a cravat. It's, it's to make a sling. sling. Yep, exactly. Yeah. To make it to make a sling. Um, <clears throat> those work great for all kinds of stuff. So you know, whether you're just tying on a bandage, you're holding up an arm, you're using it. You know, to heaven for me to splint something. We have a, something. Yep, right we have there. something for the leg, right? For like a. You have them right there. Okay. Yep. They're right there. How about that sling bandage? So yep. this is, uh, and this is that, this is that gauze that we talked about here. So what this, this would allow you to just wrap around. So this opens up and then as you put a bandage on wherever it be, you just wrap it over and that. Right. So that might not necessarily be a bandage itself. This goes over the bandage. Exactly. And then I mean, you you could, use... If push comes to shove, you can use it as a bandage. Yeah, but if push comes way. to shove, you could use your shirt if you had to. Uh, absolutely. Then, you know, it, it works. <laughs> So cool. And so the other thing that we also keep in our backpack at all times, we keep a uh, ankle brace, like a little ankle brace kind of yep. thingy because when we're hiking around this, yeah. my camera person has a tendency to twist. Um, I can be unsteady. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that we, we carry in our kit here, I want to get your opinion on is this stuff here. And this is kind of a gory reason for carrying this stuff. 
And we'll include a link to the, our Amazon shop below for this, because I think this is huge in this unfortunate day and age. But yep. this is a military quick clot gauze. Do you yep. guys use this stuff here? We do, we, do. we carry it on all, on all of our equipment. Uh, but I'll tell you what, it's my, my work, my backpack that carries my computer back and forth to work and stuff. My daughter's college bag, they all have that in. Yep, and I yeah. think That's it's- That's huge. And, yeah. and, and so this is something that wouldn't be in here or even in here, but you know, in this day and age with some of the shootings and stuff like that, this is in our backpack. I you should have one in my airport. purse, for example. You probably should. Yep. So, it, and, and this, you know, it's I, I'm, small. It's convenient. Yeah, and we talk about, you know, the, the, the shooting, but in reality, this works for all kinds of things that you would encounter on that everyday basis, you know. So, whether it's, you know, you know, as we were talking before the axe, you know, you're, you're cutting firewood, you slip, you know, you cut your arm, you cut your leg. Um, this works amazingly well to stop that uncontrolled bleeding or you're cooking yep. and you accidentally cut your hand. You know, this works great to stop that bleeding. Um, right, you know, this has got stuff d d specifically designed to cloud. This was, yes. I believe, developed by the military yep. during the Iran-Iraq wars. It, it was, yep. Okay, so at the beginning of this video, we talked about the one really weird thing that I have in my medical kit that I wanted to get Art's opinion on because Cindy was like, really? <laughs> it was kind of a little bit unusual and stuff like that, but I wanted to ask Art about it because we do keep one in here, and that is my tourniquet. What, if, what do you think about tourniquets? Is this something that should be in a medical kit or should not be? Or? Do you need special training for it? So you absolutely it should be in, in, in every medical kit. I mean, this is one of those things that, you know, we, we used to tell, people used to say, well, if you put a tourniquet on and it's been on, now you're gonna lose the limb below the tourniquet. That's, right, right, that's what I had heard. Yeah, and that's, that's actually not true. From the military, they've learned that they can put these on for hours at a time, fix the wound, take it off, and there's no loss to that, to that extremity. And when you can't control that bleeding, so if you've taken your four by four in pressure, because you come with the two most important things every day that can stop bleeding, your hands. So if you can't stop it with your hands, whether it's you know, applying pressure or if it's packing the wound with the quick clot and it won't work, the difference between, so even if this was to cause some kind of long-term issue, right. the difference of putting this on and not is a long-term issue or they could bleed out they and die. Out and so I'd rather right. have a long-term complication and have them alive. Right. So, and, in, and nowadays, these are, you'll find these everywhere. Yeah. Um, the airports, uh, you'll see what they call stop the bleed kits. They're usually next to the AED on the wall. Okay. Uh, a lot of public buildings have them. You know, schools, schools have them. I mean, unfortunately, that's the world that we live in right now. Right. Uh, and that's what's in them. That and quick clot. Huh. So this and the quick clot are basically what's... It, that's a basic stop the bleed kit. And right there. Uh, stop the bleed training is available to, you know, to, the, uh, to anyone. Um, and, and it's most most municipalities they offer it free. Yeah. And, that, and that's something that's else, you know, we're gonna include a link to the Bennington Rescue Squad right. um, down below. We'll, um, we've already mentioned that at the beginning, but definitely um, you can talk to your own rescue squad. Your Absolutely, own yeah. Right, like and find out where those things are being held. Yeah. But even something like this, this tourniquet is pretty cool. I, was, I actually have tried putting this on myself and just, it's got this little stick in here and you yeah. kind of just put this Velcro thing on where you need it to go yeah. and you just re I'll tell you what, here, you want it? Oh, yeah. You can, you can put it on me. There you go. Can, so, and you haven't been through training on how this works. I have not been on training on how so, this works. So, and you're going to see how easy this is with no training. So, this thing's going to come on up like this, and I'm going to tighten down. So, we usually say when we want it on, we want it high and tight. So, you, you know, right up in here is good. Yep. So, you kind of tighten this down. Right. Yep. Sweet little here, stick. I'll, we'll turn this. So, yep. you just kind of turn this stick. Mm -hmm. That's applying the pressure, which is slowing the blood flow down below. Mm -hmm. And then you take this and you can put this little stick right there and hold it on. Put that. And right here I have my little Sharpie. I, I always thought you wrote it on the forehead is what you were supposed to do. But I guess this so, thing, this, this one here has a little cool thing that says... In the, the military, yes. They used to tell you put it on the forehead. Um, yeah. So, but, um, yeah, so that's... Yep. And that's it. And he's turning blue down there. So <laughs> so we'll, we'll get this thing off. But yeah. So, and are you were saying that you know you might take a tourniquet. I mean, come on, seriously, Rick, do you need that? But but think about what we're doing with camping in our RV. We've got axes. We're chopping wood. Yeah. Um, you cut yourself on a tent stake. I mean. Yeah. So your tent stake. Um, you know, and you'll see people all the time with. You know, they get their camper stuck and somebody says, well, you know, I got a cable or I got a winch. I'm going to hook it up and I'm going to pull it out. Those things, when they break, can cause, you know, massive bleeding very quickly. If it's a catastrophic, you know, uh, 
injury to a, to a major artery, you know, 90 seconds. So that's why the importance of being familiar with what you have, yeah. you know, because 90 seconds goes by in the blink of an eye. Right. So, hey, I thought this was a, <laughs> Sydney was like, you Maybe know. that's something that's good to have in a backpack if you're going hiking. Yeah, maybe. And you it's, know, so, it's so and compact yes, and it's absolutely. so light. So, yeah, maybe if you were out to do something like a big hike, like going out and cl rock yeah. climbing where you can like fall and like gash yourself completely, this might be something just to transfer from here. Yeah, the click clot as here, well. Because it's all about bleeding, breathing, all yeah. that stuff. So. Yep. Oh, great. Excellent. So what do you think? Do you think I'm, we're okay? Anything I, else you'd suggest that we should have that we don't have? We've got some, some of these um, coal packs. Yep. You know, that I think you shake and stuff like this. Um, I have my marathon blanket just because I want to remember when I ran a marathon at Disney. <laughs> That's the only reason we have this, but um, Disney Marathon. But that, that. that marathon blanket is a, is a great thing. Uh, you know, for people who have, you suffer some kind of trauma. You lose body heat uh, and they become hypothermic quickly. So 70 degrees out, sun's out, you know, you've been hiking all day. They now suffer an injury and they're laying on the ground. They're gonna get cold because they've been sweating. The ground's colder and 70 degrees with well, your normal body temperature is 98.6. So it doesn't take long for that body temperature to drop. So that's not actually a, you know, an uncommon thing for first aid kits to have. You know, it's usually that, that thermal, that space blanket or whatever. First right, so for those of you that run races maybe and they give you these things, you wrap yourself, you're like, hey, cool, I'm a marathoner. And then you, you throw this thing away, hey, put Keep it in it. your truck, put Absolutely. it in your RV or something and repurpose yep. it, so. Awesome. Yep. So what do you think, we're gonna survive here? I, I think you guys are gonna survive, yeah. Nice one. All right, again, we wanna thank Art and the entire Bennington Rescue Squad crew. Again, there's the link below. Um, if you want to donate, you get some of your funds from donations Absolutely. and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. they rely on it yeah. and they provide a great service to the community, especially if you're watching this from Southern Vermont, go ahead and check out that link and support our Bennington Rescue Squad. Right, and thank you very much for the information. This is gonna be very helpful to all our RV community. Yep, and so if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. Click to subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed and comment below if there's something that you wanted to have more information about exactly and we come out with rv and airstream related videos just like this one every tuesday so be safe out there yep. and hopefully you'll never need any of the stuff that we've right. shown you here today thanks for watching <laughs>